as a Texan, it both gives me hope, but also shame because I know that, you know, we're failing these kids. Truth be told, she's brave, she's bold, and I guarantee she does not skip leg like day, y'all. You may know her best from season six of Queer Eye on Netflix. Angel Flores, thank you so much for this chat together. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to talk today. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, first of all, how how are you and how has life been since Queer Eye for you? Well, it's most certainly busy. I've been doing a lot of speaking, a lot of training, a lot of reaching out, talking out. I mean, what, what else can I say? There's like 10 different titles added to my name now. Whenever they ask me what title I want, I'm like, do I even know what title I am? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm doing everything I can, and that's that's the goal, right? Queer Eye did give you this experience unlike any other. How have you been able to build on that and have the confidence in yourself that you maybe didn't have before? Wow. Really, it's kind of just continuing what the Fab Five taught me and, and what, um, really what they taught me about how I need to live my life and the confidence I need to bring to my day-to-day, -day, I really, things changed very quickly following the release of the episode, and I figured out that I truly have to take hold of the idea that when I'm speaking out, when I'm saying my mind, when I am trying to educate people, it is truly an invitation for others to come to me, right? And for others to not have me open up to them, but for them to, you know, come into me, right? To 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 move and learn and to hear what I'm saying. And that kind of switch of confidence was super important for me. And honestly, I'm really lucky because Jonathan gets to remind me of that almost every single day. Uh, so <laughs> definitely can't get out of the, uh, the confidence zone with that. If you could take us a little bit, you know, behind the veil, like what was that shift for you? Yeah, um, it was definitely during the during the salon scene, uh, the, what we didn't see during the show is that we actually spent about six to eight hours in that salon. Um, oh we were in there for a very long time and my head was purely tinfoil by the end. Um, <laughs> but I had a lot of amazing conversations with my sibling, JBN, and for us to sit there and to speak to each other and to relate on a, relate on a plane that I have not related with somebody before, um, I, I, with them being a trans sibling, with them understanding what I'm going through. Um, they were the ones that truly stood there and were like, hey, this is your life, right? And no matter how much change you have, no matter what happens, you are here to invite others in. You're not coming out to anybody, you're inviting them in, like I said. Um, and so really from the moment that JVN turned me around in the chair and I saw myself for the first time and I was like, oh my gosh, I never even knew I could be that beautiful. It was just an instant switch of like, oh, there's possibility, right? There's possibility, there's mm. future here. There's, there's room for growth that I didn't know I had. You live in Austin, uh, Texas. Uh, the state of affairs for transgender youth and families is really challenging right now. As a Texan yourself, what's been your experience through all of this and what's your take with everything that's happening in real time? See, it's funny, um, I actually got a few comments uh, a while back, even before Queer Eye, when a lot of the, the first transports bills were landing and I found myself extremely upset and extremely bothered. And I had a couple comments um, from, from some people that, that I've been around and the, the basics were like, why, why, are you, why are you upset if this doesn't affect you, right? And I had to come back and say, and say, no, this is about me. Regardless of whether it direct, directly affects me, this is about my identity. This is about people like me, kids like me, you know, kids who are having the same experience, if not an even deeper experience than I have so far experienced myself. Um, and I know how much of an anchor things like sports have been for my life. I know that I grew up not knowing I was trans until I was 20. Um, and the only thing that kept me going was sports, um, was that community, was that the, the benefits that came with it, right? Um, so to sit and see all these bills come down, um, to see trans kids struggle, and now to speak at rallies and to have trans kids come up to me and for them to say that I inspire them, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it's absolutely insane because they're the ones that inspire me, right? Like they're the ones that have been fighting this whole time for simply themselves. Um, and I have to say as a Texan, it both 
gives me hope, but also shame because I know that, you know, we're failing these kids because they shouldn't have to fight just to just to be kids. You know, they shouldn't have to fight just to just to live. It wasn't very long ago that you were that person that was saying to someone else that they are your role model or they're looking up to or that you're looking up to someone else. When you talk about that becoming when you were 20 years old, what was that experience like? Well, start with a podcast, to be completely honest. Um, listening to, a, to a, one of my old favorite podcasts and one of the hosts came out as trans on the podcast. And as she's talking, as she's telling her story, I'm kind of sitting here like, uh, that's, that's me, that you're talking about me. Um, and immediately texted my best friend, texted uh, my partner Katya, who had just, like we had just started dating at that point in time, so what was I thinking? <laughs> um, but oh texted the text in the book immediately and was like, I think this might be a thing. I don't know. Um, and honestly, yeah. it was a good two months of exploration of taking time to myself and and um, for myself, right? So to ask questions that I've never asked before, like, am I a woman, right? Have I always been a woman? Are there signs in my life that I should have picked up on, right? And I just haven't had the ability to. Um, and sure enough, there were. And the, the switch in mindset to, to finally take a step back and say, I'm not happy, right? And I have no clue why I'm not happy, but I need help and I'm gonna figure it out. That was a huge step for me. Um, and honestly set me up for everything that's happened so far, right? Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to build an amazing network of, of trans friends and trans role models to, to transition with. But now moving into this new space, into this new part of my life, I find myself surrounded by some very amazing people. And for other people to come up to me and say that I'm inspiring, that's even beyond anything I could have ever imagined, right? I, I could never imagine myself as a role model because I'm just being me, but if somebody wants to feel inspired by the things that I do and um, the places I go and the people I help, then absolutely, I'm all here for it. You know, a lot of times we, we are in these spaces alone, but you've had your partner this whole time. See, it's funny because we kind of, uh, us as a couple, the idea of us as a couple is kind of just invisible in, in modern dating life. And we actually had, I mean, dozens of couples uh, DM us or, or, or message us or email us saying, hey, I've never seen somebody like me and my partner on TV before. And that was pretty, yeah. that was pretty crazy. And to, to, move, to go back a little bit, the day I told her, hey, this might be a thing, she didn't know what to think either, right? She was in the exact same boat of like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know where to go with this. Um, and my biggest love for her is in the fact that she sat down and, and she, she looked at me and she said, whatever you need, let's figure it out, right? And the moment that like, she, she tossed me my first bra, right? Like she, she's the one that, that helped me through these things. She's the one that pushed me to ask questions when I didn't think that they were the right questions to ask, right? Um, and ultimately, she created the safe space um, that was further built upon by things like Queer Eye, by things like powerlifting and weightlifting and other sports that I, that, that I, that I, that I perform in. Um, she was the one that first provided me the ability to think for myself and to think for myself for the first time. And I could never repay her for that. What is it about the trans experience that you feel we should talk more about? It's the joy. It's the joy. I, I, I talk a lot about how I don't come at our social issues from a negative standpoint. I'm not gonna come out here and curse and yell and, and be angry with anybody. I'm gonna stand here and say, look at my smile, right? Look how happy I am. Look how happy that every single trans person is as soon as they come into themselves, as soon as they take ownership of their body and of their, of their, of their being, right? Um, you'll never see somebody smile like a trans person who truly feels euphoric in their body, who truly feels like they are who they are, right? And mm. I think that there's so many people out there that just simply have never spoken to a trans person, never stood in front of a trans person and actually heard what they've had to say and, and seen the happiness and joy. And I think they're missing out because once you sit and you, 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 you just talk with one of us, you just look at one of us, you see the joy, it changes everything because you start to see us as we're people like you, right? We're people yeah. like everybody else. And 
if all that you're looking for is joy and happiness, then you're the same as me, right? Because I'm just trying to be happy and I'm just trying to be comfortable and I'm just trying to be the best person that I can be. And there's nothing that differentiates us. Well, listen, with all that we've talked about today, I have to throw it to you. What is your truth? Who and what is Angel Flores today? Today? You asked today. Oh, that, that's, that's a big question. Because today, yeah. I, today I, I could be anybody, right? And I think that's the, that's the big <laughs> thing about, about trans people that I, that I love throwing around is that when you are truly happy, when you truly take an ownership of yourself, you feel like you can do anything, anything at all. Um, and so, like, I have really bad ADHD. And so I'm constantly coming up with brand new ideas. Like, oh, I should start a podcast. I should be on a movie. I should be singing. I should be, I should be a professional driver. What should I do? I should do everything. Um, and for the first time in my life, sitting here feeling fulfilled in myself, at least for a little bit, right? That the, it'll, it comes and goes because we're always growing. Um, but just for a little bit, I can sit and I can say, I can truly do whatever I want to do. Um, because I'm happy, because I'm me. And I know that while he could never have done the things that I, have, I do, she will always do more and she will always excel and she will always push mm. to the hardest that she possibly can because she can, because she is, right? Um, and that's, that's the bottom line. That's my truth. The, my truth is that she will do more and she will always do more because she's happier. I love it. Well, Angel, cheers to doing it all. <laughs> I know you can. I know you will. Um, and thanks for sharing that truth with us today. So appreciate you. Of course, of course. I appreciate you. And it's, it's been a great talk. <laughs> Mwah.